So after teaching in all of these levels, preschool, elementary, high school, uh, university, after doing that, then I went back to Stanford and got my PhD in education and linguistics. And so my uh, research to be able to teach at the University of Michigan for eight years, and then at Stanford for the last 19 years, um, has to do, I have to do work that is theoretically uh, informing, but also empirical work. And it has, and but I have a personal commitment to do work that has real world implications. So all of the work that I do, that I do does have real world implications and it builds on the resources that come out of our community. The children that we're trying to serve, we believe that they can and that they will if given the proper support. And so as an educator, um, I, I, I went into education. I thought about going into med school, a uh, couple other places, but I decided to go into education um, because it is so important. What I want to point out is that I'm looking around this room. A lot of people are, uh, on, from what I've discerned so far, a lot of uh, in levels of or um, um, professions are represented here. But I wanted to know how many classroom teachers currently are in this room. Yet, what we know is that the most important element, the determinant of whether our children are going to succeed in this society or not is dependent upon that classroom teacher. Yet, she's treated in society, mostly she and we know, most of our children are in schools with white females, uh, middle class, monolingual, um, and don't have the cultural competence to work with our, our kids. This is who's working with our kids. But if we don't make a difference at that level, within, we're making differences that may not make a difference. So I'm encouraging us to get to that student in the classroom. And that's why I work in traditional classrooms, community-based organizations, and from the work that I start out as a linguistics, looking at the language practices of kids, how they read, how everything that they do in the classroom is based in language, I realize that what we, if we don't get to the teachers, we're not getting to the real source of the problem. Therefore, my work in teacher education. And so I've been working uh, with Jason uh, currently on some work, professional development and teacher education. And so those are where my pa passions are lying and the current research that I'm going to talk about. It's motivated by national and international um, work that is, I've, I've done and spent time uh, looking at the changing demographics. This is not just a US problem, it is a global problem. And I kind of figured, well, if we can get some global buy-in to making changes, changing culture and practices, perhaps and since we are majority, people of color are the majority when we look globally, perhaps we can have more of an input. And so uh, concern for changing demographics, both here and across national boundaries, concern about the inequitable distribution of resources. We see what's going on in our communities and um, uh, continuing patterns of underachievement, as Dr. Ferguson has uh, pointed out. The interesting thing is we look at the uh, performance of our children so often, and we look at different periods in time, and uh, performance is perhaps under, for, some, for a majority of our children, um, underachieving. Uh, then we get to a point in time and things get a little bit better. Up, down, this is the way the graphs go. But I want you to notice something. As our achievement scores go up, so do the others. This gap continues consistently to exist. So what are we going to do that's going to break these cycles for our children in schools? Um, so that's why we're looking at professional development and we're trying to change teachers. Um, we, have a, we have a shortage of teachers uh, and the problem is uh, if we have uh, brilliant, 
um, young people as yourselves who have the opportunity to go to universities. They realize, like child care workers, how much they're going to get paid, how much teachers are paid in schools, and um, uh, how they're treated by this society. We don't have enough teachers of color who believe in our children as only they can going into the classroom. So while we're coming up with startups, get us some more teachers of color in those classrooms. I'd like for you to make that a priority as well. So um, my um, current research, I've done you know, the, the language patterns of, of kids of color, uh, particularly African-American kids, um, their achievement in the classroom. Then I began to look at what can we do with this information, which is share with teachers so they can use it in informed ways to help our kids uh, to achieve. Well, that turned my attention to teachers. And when I began to look across national boundaries, I started going to South Africa when Mandela was released and uh, looking at the parallels in the challenges that are being faced by teachers in South Africa. Uh, then I went to New Zealand. Then I went to Australia. Last place I've been in was Barcelona. We're, this is across national boundaries. And so perhaps we have some allies that we can bring into our uh, um, 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 work that we're doing as well. And so it's been shown across the national boundaries. I've been looking at successful programs that make a difference in the lives of students of color. I've been looking at paradigms, principles, and practices that are making a difference in classrooms. But what we're finding is even most teacher education programs that teachers go to it's not changing behavior at the practice level. Even reflection, even feeling good about themselves as teachers, it is not translating into differences for those children in the classroom. And so we persist. Uh, so you can see the work is being done across national boundaries. Uh, from the work that I've been doing over the uh, last decade, um, I've developed a model of generative change upon which we're, de uh, we're designing the work that we're doing. Uh, when we talk about generativity, we're talking about the teacher's ability. We have teachers that are going into classrooms. Well, first of all, they're going into teacher education programs where the teacher educators don't know how to educate our children. So how can they leave there? They haven't been in our communities. The teacher educators have not been in our community. So we have to do more than give them the information. So the virtual is good. But giving them the information is, is those practices have to come from here and from here. And so how do we begin to make the difference deeper for our teachers? And uh, the model of generative change is a process, a way we work with teachers to try to make a difference so that teachers can go beyond. They need to be able to um, continually learn. They must bring their experiences to the learning environment. They must um, learn all that they can in terms of additional book knowledge that will help to give them the knowledge. But dispositions, beliefs, and abilities of our kids, how do we make those differences as well? With the model of generative change, we have teachers who we want to get deeper. They learn from the information they bring with them. Uh, their own uh, experiences, what they learn in school. But then they must be able to go into classrooms and learn from the students and from the students' communities what they need to know to be able to teach them effectively. And the model of generative change uh, puts that process uh, into, into being. And so the model kind of looks like this. This is where most teacher education programs start and end in terms of culture and, uh, change and, and practices on the part of the teachers. It's with reflection, metacognitive awareness, using narrative and personal literacy uh, 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 recounting uh, to, to have teachers reassess their long-term feelings and beliefs about how they work with children. After going through narrative and uh, writing as a pedagogical tool, um, we, we, and increasing their metacognitive awareness, we have teachers who have a sense of awakening. Now, this awakening is where most teacher education programs begin. Awakening that there, there is a need in children to do some things that they have not been doing. But the model of generative change 
moves beyond the work of, 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 Brun, of uh, um, um, Bransford and others who talk about how people learn at the metacognitive level. Then we move on and build on the work of uh, Mikhail Bakhtin and work on ideological coming, becoming through the structuring, the design of our teacher education program, what we do with teachers, moving from reflection to introspection. As you see, we go on to critique and the development of a voice on the part of the teachers themselves about what needs to happen in classrooms with individual students. And so at the ideological becoming stage, we work with teachers uh, by getting them personally involved and motivated for change, trying to get them to be agents of change with a sense of agency. In our program from there, we move to the work of, of, uh, of, of Vygotsky, Lev Vygotsky, uh, trying to get internalization on the part of teacher. Do you really believe? And we do that through teacher research projects, uh, engagement within communities, uh, early in the program and continuing, and having them to do critique. Many programs that you'll look at, it, the teacher will say, I didn't want to learn all of this theory, or, but they need to learn. They need to engage with it. They need to critique it and decide what they will take as their own. Uh, and from there, we see teachers developing a sense of advocacy on the part of students. And finally, generativity. Generativity is going beyond what you can learn in a book. It goes beyond what uh, the curriculum guide says to do. It, teachers began to have a sense of efficacy about their belief to make a difference in the lives of their students. And so they develop a voice, they become generative and a sense of efficacy. This is where, and then the generativity comes in in their ability to go into the classroom, be pedagogical problem solvers, and be able to develop a curriculum to meet the needs of individual students. So, a lot of people who, are, who have these capacities, they don't stay in education at the teacher level. They are not rewarded by the society for the expertise that we demand to have good teachers in the classroom. But we're working on it, it's developing, and we're using the model of generative change, not only in teacher education programs, but in professional development. And I do believe that um, we'll be talking about that a lot more. So why do we need generative uh, thinking on the part of teachers? Because they are entering classrooms that they have not seen before. Most teachers have not been in these communities. Most of them don't work with the children that we're really concerned about. And so they must be able to go in and uh, generate new thinking in environments that they were not prepared for in teacher education, but they are passionate about the work that they do, and they go in those classrooms and make a difference. That's what master teachers do. All right, we need generative change because we have Gen Z. Have you been reading about this new generation that we're dealing with that are uh, uh, AI is not a big deal for them because they are ready for it. And they are standing up to our society and they said, enough is enough. All the things that we've been seeing in the news, they are not tolerating it because we're destroying their schools, their uh, uh, environment ecologically, and they're not going to go the traditional path that many of us have gone. They are demanding more. We need teachers who can meet those demands. And because we must be able to learn from students, and that we can do with a sense of generativity. And so it's really important. Uh, and so I want to engage you. I want you to think about, all of you know what metacognitive awareness is, as being able to think about what you're thinking. That's deep. Most teachers are too busy to stop and do that because they've got 30 kids around them and they're trying to address, you know. But we have to train teachers who are metacognitively aware. And they can stop and engage in metacognition at any time. And so metacognition is also the ability to think about your thinking, but then also to predict your ability to address what you're trying to address, to, to make adaptations and change. All of this comes in with metacognitive awareness. And so it's very important. We do that through narrative, 
uh, through reflection, through the stages of reflection, it's not just one stage, and then moving us to a sense of awareness. So this is what we're asking of teachers. We're going to ask that of you as well. We're going to give you just a moment to engage metacognitively in a question that we'd like to put before you, before we go on. I'd like for you to think about your first engagement or becoming aware of issues of race in this country. Your experience with race. So I would like for you, you have something that you can write on and you do have a pen. And I would like for you to turn around. This is what we use in teacher education as well. It's a moment for a free write. Research shows that actual engagement with writing manually, not typing, writing, makes a difference in the neural connections that are taking place in the brain. And so I want you to just take five minutes. The thing about a free write is that you don't worry about uh, grammar, punctuation. You just write. You think about the question at hand, and you just keep writing. So we have five minutes for this activity, and I want you to write about the first encounter you remember and its impact on you, race. I see faces. Uh, people have stopped. Some people have stopped writing. And so um, as a teacher, a master teacher, you pick up on that, and you move on. So what I wanted you to do for just about two minutes uh, is to do a table share. Anyone, did you have any epiphanies? You know, as you became metacognitively aware of your awareness of race in your life, there may be something that someone at the table wants to share. So we only have two minutes because I'm on the clock as well. Um, so <laughs> two minutes, let's not lose time. Let's, let's talk. Talk to each other for two minutes. Yeah, thanks everyone for sharing. Sometimes when we share, when we think metacognitively about issues, we, um, it can be life changing. So for many teachers that we work with, it can be life changing. But if you think about these issues of race, think about what our kids are going through. And um, they're learning about race from the television. I think we should have conversations before. Uh, at a very young age, they become aware of issues of race or differentiation uh, in privilege and in color. So is anyone just dying to share with the group an epiphany? So, so yeah, the, what's powerful for me, the stories that were shared here, were all about experiences in school. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's unbelievable. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so now that you realize these epiphanies are just the beginning of the process of generative change, the processes that teachers need to go through that they do not go through in most teacher education programs, which they need to experience in order to be effective with our children. So we'll go on with the next speaker in our group while you think about that. <laughs>